uh, this video is going to uh, talk about using a Megger. Um, and I'll tell you what, so in 26 years, I've only needed to use a Megger twice. Uh, but both times that I've used it, I ended up using it reactively. Um, and that I could have saved myself a lot of trouble if I was doing these tests in a proactive manner. Um, one instance in, in particular, we had some feeder conductors that uh, weren't pulled in with very much care. And uh, the insulation on those conductors was nicked in a few in a few places. And within a couple months of the project being completed and, and energized, the conductors completely failed. Um, so if I had done a mega test, such as what we're going to discuss today, then uh, I probably could have predicted the outcome and replace those conductors prior to it becoming a much bigger issue. Obviously, if you've got to replace conductors, you've got a you've got a pretty good issue on your hand already. But once you put them into service and you turn a job over to a customer, um, it becomes a much larger issue. So it's better to be proactive in these cases. So this video is going to be more or less an introduction to um, Megger uh, testing. Um, it's not really going to be a deep dive. Um, if, you, if you're interested in really digging in and understanding uh, what it is to do a mega test and you know, what are the conditions that you should be doing them, um, then actually the company that uh, makes mega testers has a technical document called a stitch in time. Um, it's very good, very good uh, document, so I would suggest reading that. Um, so first of all, what is a mega? So a mega is a testing device that uh, measures the resistance between um, basically the resistance between two points. We were testing insulation. More or less, that's, that's the point, is to test the integrity of the insulation of a conductor. Um, whereas a standard meter, you know, such as my meter here, um, you know, this meter can test, you know, standard resistance um, values, you know, up to a point. Um, I don't know the exact value, but it's not very high. Um, you know, but basic testing, if you, if you want to test, you know, like a, a resistor for an end of line circuit, you know, on a fire alarm circuit, for instance, and, you know, I think those are typically 6K or some systems are 6K. This tester would be able to test that. What this tester won't be able to do is to test the value of the insulation between two insulators. So we understand that insulators prevent current from flowing from the conductor to other surfaces. That's the reason conductors are insulated. That's what prevents short circuits between them when, when they're run right against each other, is that this insulation is designed with a certain value to withstand current leakage through it up to a certain voltage. Um, there's really no such thing as a pure, well, I'm no scientist, so, but, I. From what I understand, and in layman's terms anyway, there's really no such thing as a pure resistor, um, as an absolute resistor. You give anything enough voltage, the electrons will be released, electrons will move through it. Um, so anyway, this is a, this is a Romex cable, type NM cable, code would require, we would call it type NM cable. And this cable has a resistance, excuse me, a voltage rating of 600 volts, okay? And most building wiring, uh, when we're talking about distribution of branch circuits, uh, feeders, you know, for your lighting and your receptacles, your refrigerators, your stoves, things like that, that wiring will use an insulation that has a rating of 600 volts. Um, and we call that low voltage. So any 600 volts and lower is a low voltage system. What we're talking about today are insulations that uh, use cables that have voltage ratings of 600 volts. We're not going to get into above, above those ratings. Well, Mega works by sending a DC voltage. It uses a DC voltage to send a current through a conductor. And then if there's no return path, then it, it will read infinity. But basically what it does is it sends a DC voltage through, through a conductive path in order to produce a resistance measurement. Now if you're familiar with Ohm's law, um, you know that voltage is voltage is equal to current times resistance. I always have to play it in my head. 
um, but voltage is equal to current times resistance. And so, no, you know, basically, I mean, it's a little more complicated to, than that. The way this this tester equalizes itself, because there's there's a lot of different there's a couple different current forces that are at play. Not only the leakage current that we're trying to measure, and that's really what we care the most about is that leakage current, but there's also a capacitive current that is created on the conductor as well, and the 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 internal circuits of these mega equip of this mega tester is designed to try to find that balance in order to give you an accurate reading. But you'll notice this later that the tester is constantly changing. Uh, it, it almost never fixes on a value. It's constantly moving, and it's because of those those forces that it is trying to equalize against. Um, but to simplify that for what your typical wireman um, would care about is what we're trying to measure is leakage current. And so what this device will do is it it will send out a voltage. It will, set, it will, it will use a voltage of 125 through 1000 volts. This particular tester will do that. And then with that voltage, it could produce a current if you have a closed circuit. Or if you have insulation that has lost some of its integrity, then you might get leakage current across those, those insulators. Or you might get leakage current through earth back to, back to the testing device. Um, so that's basically what, what it's doing, is it's using its voltage to push a current and then using the Ohm's law calculation, it will produce a reading of what resistance um, it, it comes up with based on those calculations. So why would we use a mega um, in the first place? Well, what we're looking for when we use a mega is for is leakage current. We don't want leakage current. Um, we need the current to go where we want it to go. Um, as soon as it starts going anywhere else, you know that's that's not the point. Um, that's not what we're aiming for as you know as installers or as as you know, if you're a plant main. I've never done maintenance, but I imagine if you're someone who maintains a plant, you would be very concerned with the motors that are critical to the operations of that plant. And so maybe what you would do is um, periodically. Um, maybe every six months or maybe every to a year. I can't imagine it's one that you would need to do too frequently um, But you would want to test the motor, the motor or transformers in that plant for um, The integrity of the insulation and then you can track a trend So like if you have a motor and you track, you know, you, you record what that insulation value is and then in six months you do it again six months you do it again and if you track a downward trend then you can predict that that motor is going to fail and uh, you can get in front of that and, and get a replacement. Um, in, the ter in terms of what I'm usually concerned about as an installer, um, as an installations electrician, is w when I am concerned with it, it's usually with underground wire pulls. And what I'm gonna look for is leakage current between the conductors and to ground and um, and I'm going to be looking for values much higher than one mega ohm, but the standard minimum for an acceptable value reading uh, would be one mega ohm, uh, and anything lower that would lower than that would be considered um, well would be considered too low. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to have a problem, but it does mean that they're that the conductors are not in their ideal state. Okay, so let's talk about the mega itself. Uh, this per this one here is just one from Klein, the Klein ET600. So a few things that it has on it. It can test voltage. It's got a spot here for testing alternating current. It can test direct current. It has a, a continuity test that will provide that will produce an audio audible signal, and it can do a standard ohms test. It then on this side is where the mega ohm readings come from. And on the mega ohm readings, it will use 125 volts, 250 volts, 500 volts, or 1000 volts direct current. 
Uh, it has a continuous lock feature so that you can test hands-free for a duration or during a normal test you would just press and hold this test button. I've got some conductors here set up that I've had sitting in this bowl of water. One of them is damaged and one of them isn't. I just slit a razor blade across the bottom of one of them, put it submerged in the water, and the other one is, I didn't damage it. Um, it should be fine. So we're going to try to, of course I know which one is which, but um, we're going to do some tests and see, see what we get. All right, so well, let me just show you a few things on the voltage side of this tester that just sort of work like normal. Um, we can do, we can test for DC voltage. Uh, so a little battery here. Let me do a little, little test on this battery, see if it's any good. Which I've got 1.558 volts on a 1.5 volt battery. So it's a good battery. So I'm testing DC voltage with that. And I can test AC voltage for, with this as well. Um, that's important because you, this, you, when you're doing any ohms testing, either with the mega ohm feature or a regular ohms test, you need to do that on circuits that are de-energized. So then we also have a continuity tester here. So I'm testing my leads, my leads are good. And let's do a few tests. And I'm going to test on this one first. Of course I put it in water because that's what concerns me the, the most is, con is conductors pulled underground. Now this type of insulation 600 volt rated insulation. We want to put this meter on 500 volts. There's no need to go to a thousand volts. We should never be seeing that kind of voltage and that kind of voltage would damage the insulation anyway. We would expect it to fail. So we're going to put it on the 500 volt rating. Turn the backlight on so that it looks a little better in the video. And let's do the tests. So I'll just do this first one by long pressing the test button. You press and hold it, and you give it a little time to zero out, which this is reading 4,000, which is the, that's the high range of this meter is 4,000 is 4, mega ohms. Okay, and so you can see uh, on the tester, it's reading 4,000 mega ohms. It has 544 volts that it is applying to the circuit, but the circuit's open. Um, and the insulation is fine. There's no nicks in the conductor. So we can, we just release. And then the voltage returns to zero. So that voltage returning to zero, that's the capacitive voltage that's been, that built up on the insulation during the test. You need that to return to zero before you do a new test. So let's test. So we know we're good between those conductors. So now let's test from white to ground. Make sure these are not touching each other. This one I'll do the hands-free test. So to do that, I'm going to press continuous lock. Now we see the lock symbols there. I'll press test, and it will. I'll give it some time. So this one's fine. So 50/50 shot. We know which one is probably no good because I told you one was damaged. Um, so, but since it's on continuous lock, in order to end the test, I hit test, and now it goes down to zero. Okay, so now it's zeroed. I can take the clip off, and I'm ready to go to the other conductor. Put that clip there. Clip there. All right, continuous lock. All right. Well, I mean, I told you what was going to happen, but you know, this conductor now we can see that we have 0.245 mega ohms. Now, let's do a little math. So we have 0.295, still sort of finding itself. We would be using 120 volts on this conductor. So let's see, what does that work out to? Let's do the math on that. 
apply Ohm's law, which is voltage is equal to current times resistance. So what we want to find right now is what would the current be across 200,000 ohms at 120 volts. So what we want to do then is current, which is equal to voltage divided by resistance. So we're going to say 120 divided by 200,000 is 0 0.0006 amps. That is very, very, very low. Um, it was, it's non-discernible. So this would fail. If we were looking at this, then we would say that's a failure point. Like this, this is lower than we would like it to be. So what we would prefer to see is that this reading is one mega ohm or higher. But the fact that it's low like this, this would this might be something that we would then want to watch. So in a maintenance scenario, we might watch this and say, okay, we're at well now we're at 2.4. And then we read this later and we're at 0.1, and then we're at 0 0.05. Then this is getting worse. And so then it should be replaced. But if we keep measuring it and it stays at this value, then I would argue that, okay, it's degraded, it's not what we would want, but it's not heading towards failure, it's sort of reached its equilibrium of suckiness. <laughs> okay, so anyway, so let's hit test, go back to zero, take the lead off. So, but that, so anyway, so this is between these two conductors. What do we, what about this bare ground? This could also represent like a metal pipe. So maybe maybe this is a damaged insulator leaning against a grounded metal pipe. And we could think of this conductor that way. Let's see what we get. Well, that's a lot less, isn't it? 0 0.18, 0 0.17, or excuse me, 0 0.018. That's 18,000 ohms of resistance. This does indicate that the insulation is damaged somewhere. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's going to ground out and short circuit um, yet, but it in could indicate that it's leading to a problem. And I can tell you with the way I damage these that this is a problem that under, if I applied 120 volts to this, that in, t in time, in quick time, if this conductor were sitting in water like this, then it would eventually fail completely and probably fairly rapidly. Um, so I think that that's one problem with once the insulation does fail and it's in contact with something like moisture or even humid air, which, you know, in Florida, with very humid environments, um, that those forces will compound upon each other and this conductor will rapidly deteriorate. So, I would say if I got a reading like this, then we've got to look at replacing this conductor, um, especially if it's something critical to operations. Heck, if you were doing a hospital, say you were doing a hospital and you had readings like this, um, that would be pretty serious, wouldn't it? That you, you've got, you need these systems to function and be reliable and you and you can't have surprises or something like that and i would i would imagine that these types of tests are, are mandatory in those environments i don't have a lot of hospital specific experience to that level um but i would think that those would be some environments to where you'd want to do a mega test to make sure that uh you have not created that you that we don't have a life safety uh situation um on our hands okay so i hope you found this useful and thank you for watching.